right, this is Jimmy Cabs tape to broadcast and the 5150 interview series, Bulldozer Magazine. Let me start off by giving you the definition of yob. A rude, noisy, and aggressive young man. What is not disclosed on that definition is the fact that for some reason, and I'll introduce you in a minute, you've been criminally, criminally classified as Doom, stoner, psychedelic rock, psychedelic stoner rock. But what they don't mention is true musicianship. Indeed, the new era of real music and a real life rock and roll band. Would you agree with that? And would you like to elaborate a little bit? Mike Scheidt of Yacht. Um, it's, it's more helpful maybe to say that we're doom, I guess, as a genre than to say we're grind. Like, that would be, like, I think if people bought a record and you told them it was a death metal record, they might be disappointed. Um, so I think Doom is, at least the pace of the music, it's more helpful than it isn't. But we're not really a genre. We're not, no. I mean, we're influenced by Doom heavily, but we're influenced by a lot of things, and I think that shows in what we do. One of the things that I've always appreciated about your band and what has been evident, especially since last year release, and I'm notorious for butchering titles, a clear, clearing the path to ascend, which is on New Rot Records, get it. One of the things that I've seen is the progression of your musicianship and the fact that your, your music has gone to a whole other realm of being emotional and human. What I mean by that, this last record that you put out, you have to commit to it. It's not a one-track record, you know what I mean? It's, it's four tracks, but they take you on this really incredible ride, not only with the heaviness, not only with the the whole ambiance of just succumbing to it, but also emotionally, you really connect with it. Tell me a little bit about the writing of that record. Um, wrote it over about three years of time, and uh, yeah, just channeled some hard times into it. And, uh, you know, part to, partly to really ultimately move through it. So that was kind of the bend, is to deal with it, but also move through it and have a sense of positivity and good process and you know not to shy away from it you your band has been within the last couple of years expanding to a whole new wider demographic a lot of so-called established musicians what I mean by that are musicians that are making a lot of money they're not touring in a van they've acknowledged Yob as an inspiration and also have complimented you very well if you'd like I could mention these artists but let's talk about the demographic. Do you feel that the audience that you're branching out to can really grasp what you're doing in the live situation? Um, I mean, I think what's happened as much as anything these days is when we're playing shows, um, however many people are there, um, it feels like they're not there by accident. I feel like people come to the shows and they're specifically there for the opening bands or for the bands that we tour with, of course, we get to play with very good bands. Um, and I think that when they're there to see us, they know what they're in for. And so um, that to me is a, a very lucky, fortunate thing. And that to me says that to that small group of people that we, that they get us as we are and that it does something for them too. And um, so that's about as much as I can really say about that. As far as kind of the conceptual part of it being outside or more people being able to come into it, um, already more people are into it than I ever thought would be. So I, I don't know. It's got to be rewarding though, right? Sure. Because overall, this is what a musician wants, is to have his band and the music be recognized to everybody and still retain the integrity and definitely not affect artistically and musically what you're doing. In other words, it's real music and you're not following the program like other bands, which is PR, propaganda, whatever is in happening at during the time. Yeah, I mean, we've never... I mean, I... I that game, huh? No, I mean, we just came from a time where just not many people really did pay attention or, or care about this style of music, and so... That kind of ambition was never really what we were after or driven by, and certainly over the years, as opportunities have come our way, um, and potentially, you know, bigger opportunities, 
where we'd have to look at it and make a decision as to whether we are wanting to do the growth that it will take to step up to a particular thing. Um, we've always made sure that that we were intact doing it, and that um, and that uh, there were decisions and growth that made sense to us on just on a gut level. Um, and as far as being ambitious, we're still not really ambitious. To be honest, it's just we we show up and we play, and when the opportunities come, we take the ones that feel good to us, and then we throw everything we have at it. But it's not with like an end game. Like there's no five year plan. Yeah. You know, um, and I don't even know at this moment when the next tour is or what our plans are from here. And we're not very good at plotting. So um, I, I don't know what, what's coming. Is that why the band has not only made that hurdle? Because the last time we talked, you didn't even know if the band was going to continue to move forward. Is that why the band's, or correct me, is the band still in a good, healthy, creative place? I think so. I mean, I think we feel inspired, certainly, within what we're playing. Um, and we feel inspired on stage and feel inspired by the music and each other. And we have very good, healthy friendships and um, a, what feels like a good balance. And so we just have to maintain that. New music. Are you writing new music now? I mean, it has been a year since you released your last record. And by the way, it's, I'm glad to see that it's being recognized, not only by... DIY underground magazines like Bulldozer, but also Rolling Stone. Right? Yeah, it's wacky. That, that's fucking insane, but it's great. But new music. Are you writing new music? And has this new attention contaminated in any way the writing process, the creative process? Because now there's a whole wider demographic. Well, I mean, the wider attention of the things that you mentioned. Um, I mean, certainly we're, it's an honor. And we're also kind of inherently distrustful of it. You know, like we don't know, we're not sure that it actually really means anything. And if anything, it just points back to us just having to continue to d just do our work. And, um, you know, we all have our lives and, you know, two of us have kids and, you know, we have... Oh, well, that'll keep you grounded. And so we, we, you know, we have life at home that things that we have to balance with all of this. You know, we can't, we can't just float away. You know, we have to try to stay grounded, like you said. Um, and yeah, I think I do feel inspired to write some more. I mean, I've been working on a solo record for a while, and that's definitely going to come be recorded sometime next year for sure. Nice. Um, that be on New Rod as well? I, you know, I think that's actually going to be on Thrill Jockey, nice. who did my first one. But it's going to be very different. It's actually going to be more of a band, and it's going to be more electric than acoustic. Nice. Um, but there'll be some acoustic in it. Um, but I want room there for there to be a lot of different instruments and possibilities and have it be very creative in that regard as far as being, bringing in collaborative elements and... So we'll see. You know, it's still a work in progress. But as far as Yob specifically, yeah, I do feel moved to start writing when I get home. One of the things that I've always appreciated about real artists and musicians, that, and I, by the way, it's I'm glad that you're getting the recognition you deserve because it's long time overdue. But at the end of the day, it's what they give back to the audience. It's one thing to be a real music lover, Mike, which you are. But to give back to the audience when they're playing on stage, only the real deal can do that. Tonight, Yob is going to demonstrate what I've known for a long time, and there's a whole line of people out there ready to see you perform. One more show off this tour. This is going to be in Oakland tomorrow, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's that going to be? Uh, it's going to be at the Oakland uh, uh, Metro Op the Opera House, and um, it's going to be with Acid King oh, and wow. Black Cobra and Embers. Uh, it's going to be quite good, I think, um, and a great way to end the tour, and um, pretty Great excited. City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yob, make sure you go and pick up the new record. Well, it's been over a year, but to me, it's still new. Make sure you experience what I've known for a long time and definitely go and appreciate a band that really brings it to the stage. Mike Scheidt, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, Jimmy. It's always a pleasure, man.